every breeding program, I think, needs to have a plan. And it takes years of, uh, of looking at the breed and the individuals in the breed, the attractiveness of certain individuals, where these characteristics uh, came about, where they get them from, what families do they get these characteristics from. And uh, what I have done is uh, try to take families with tremendous athletic ability, having an open delivery, not an elbow knocker, not trotting underneath themselves, but out in front. That's very attractive to look at. Also, what's very attractive is carriage, having an uh, expressive look as it enters the ring, having a nice, uh, uh, good hook neck that sets back in harness and has expression, looks through the bridle. When you think about it, all harness show animals, whether saddlebreds, hackneys, morgans, or whatever, uh, want to have that presence. I've noticed they're all after the same thing, athletic ability and presence in the ring. And that presence, we, you got to have a neck. You can't get by with a short neck pony uh, that's trotting high and maybe doesn't carry his head high enough. And the pony that carries its head higher will win over the one that cannot carry it. It's not made to carry the, his head higher. So we breed for those things. You, you find these characteristics you want, and then you find families that have those characteristics, and then you breed for it. You line breed for it. You can't, you just, if you just cross, for example, one world champion to another world champion, it's just like winning the lottery. It's just a gamble if you get a good one or not. And I've seen so many people cross one world champion with another world champion and get a, just another pony. And it doesn't take the characteristics from either one. So you have to kind of line breed that in there so it increases your odds to get the animal that you really are after. And I remember Gary Dunbar telling me years ago that you breed parts to parts to get the animal you want. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but if you uh, line breed some of these characteristics, like an athletic ability into an animal, uh, then you cross that animal with a line bred family that has a lot of carriage and expression, length of neck, length of leg, and uh, you try to get the ultimate show horse that way. So what we did, we took uh, four families that we had a lot of respect for, and one was uh, uh, the Shamrock King, Dunhaven Shamrock King. Uh, he, had, he was one of the uh, sires that produced tremendous open motion. And uh, his two sons, uh, Sky King and, and, and Dunhaven Impression. And uh, we line bred that. For example, in uh, Heartland Equality, is line bred on the dam side for athletic ability. Uh, the dam Heartland Princess is sired by Sky King. Sky King is sired by uh, Dunhaven Shamrock King and out of Dunhaven Valerie. The dam of Heartland Princess is sired by uh, Dunhaven Impression by Shamrock King and out of Valerie. So we line bred Valerie and Shamrock King together and got the uh, broodmare Heartland Princess and she's had several really good winners. But the most noted one is uh, Heartland Equality. Of course, uh, the sire of Heartland Equality is Dunhaven Bandelier. And of course, Dunhaven Bandelier is line bred for neck carriage and, uh, and, that, and that look you get. But he was not a very a real athletic animal. He had adequate ability, but not freaky ability. Another sire that produced tremendous open motion was the Wheatland Humdinger line. Uh, this uh, line had uh, uh, tremendous open motion and could wear the cells and had a lot of desire. Some of them are a little tough to work. Uh, some of them wasn't quite as refined as what you maybe would want, but they had a lot of athletic ability. Many of our, many, many of our world champions, I'd say uh, maybe 90%, uh, and that our, our top ponies have the Wheatland Humdinger line in it. And that uh, made for a better looking delivery of motion. And uh, that make it, uh, it would cause them to be, be a little bit ahead of the pony that didn't have that open delivery and open trot. Uh, and the way of going, the way, way it lands on the ground and the way it comes off the ground. So we worked hard on that. We, lined, we acquired the Wheatland Humdinger line from Gary Dunbar in Saskatchewan, Canada, and we worked very hard of line breeding that line together. 
when we line bred it together, it, it didn't develop a great show pony, but it developed to be a great broodmare or a great sire. We use also the Cadets and uh, Choice line, which has great hawk. One thing I found out, anytime you got Cadet Commander in your bloodlines, you have great hawk action. And uh, you have a lot of heart, a lot of desire. And so uh, we use that through the line of uh, Dunhaven's awesome creation and Cadets and Choice offsprings. We have a lot of that bloodline. And so we're line breeding uh, the Crescendo Sun Bandolier. Uh, we, line, we got quite a few daughters of him, and we line breed the Cadets and Choice line, and, uh, which goes back to Cadet Commander, and we line breed the Wheatland Humdinger line, which goes back to Glenhaven Top Hat, that's imported, I think, from Scotland, and then, uh, of course, the Shamrock King line goes back also to Cadet Commander, uh, but it's uh, through, uh, he gets his carriage and brilliance from his dam side, uh, the uh, Dunhaven Emperor Mare. Sometimes your bloodlines need to have some pretty put into them. So you, uh, you might get a very athletic and a lot of carries, but uh, lacks refinement and pretty, so you need to start doing that. One thing I found out over the years that really, really helped in a breeding program, and many people are unable to do it, but we were able to do it living in Iowa, is to have large numbers of these gene pools. You know, if you have 20, 30 mares of one gene pool, you can line breed that and crisscross it. You have also sires of the same sire. Like, for example, I have uh, bandolier daughters, large number of bandolier daughters. I have five bandolier sons. Uh, so if you're just breeding one or two mares or six mares a year or 10 mares a year, uh, you don't have the chance of changing the look of an animal. If you were raising uh, dogs or, or pigs, you have litters. But a horse has one animal a year, and if you're fortunate to keep the mare pregnant and raising a foal, it takes a long time to get the gene pool. So it's helped us to have large numbers of these gene pools. I got large numbers of, of these families that we talked about. Another area that I think a person needs to do is, is, uh, is look all over the country uh, whether it's in our country or around the world for uh, a hackney, for example, that could uh, benefit your breeding program. And find out uh, where their gene pools came from and to give them those characteristics that you're looking for. And always be on the lookout for something new. Don't think you, you got it at your farm. There's other things out there that can help your breeding program and uh, that's very important also. So you just have to work on this. There's not, there's not a quick fix or a quick uh, formula to, to have a, a great pony, and unless you do uh, get lucky like winning the lottery and, and get one. And I heard years ago a man say, if you get one great pony in a lifetime, feel lucky. Well, I don't think that's true. I think you can have a, quite a few great ponies in your lifetime if you really work at the breeding part and getting the gene pools together that are, have those characteristics that is attractive to the human race.